guys, I appreciate the, the opportunity to come and speak. And uh, uh, I'm a, I have the uh, opportunity to talk to you about uh, timber markets and an update. And I'm going to be honest with you right out the gate. I have no crystal ball. And if I did, I'd probably be doing something else for a living. So <laughs> I'm going to give you, uh, you know, we're going to look at some things and talk about some things. This is a 45 minute to one hour presentation, so I have, I'm going to do my best to condense it into 25 minutes. Moderators, I will be watching you closely. <laughs> so it's just, just let me know when we're running short on time. Um, this, this is a layman's look. I'm, I'm a forester. I, I participate in the timber market, so I, I kind of have my own views and my own um, interpretations of what the market's doing, where it's going. Uh, I did see Richard Hall in the audits. If you need a doctorate level, there he is. Go talk to Mr. Richard. So, uh, all right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to try to step out here. Maybe it can follow me and I can uh, figure out how to run this thing. So, um, anytime you have a, a timber market or any market talk, it is chat, it is charts and graphs and tables. Oh my. So, we're going to be looking at a lot of charts and graphs. And uh, <clears throat> with, each, with each chart, of course, we'll talk about where we've been, kind of where we are, and maybe a little bit of where we're going. And then at the very end, uh, you know, if you're confused, you're not sure what I said, I'm going to give you a very short summary, but I could probably give you right now and sum up the whole presentation and we can go on the next step. But i got to fill up 25 minutes, so I'm going to do my best to do it. All right. So we're going to start with this slide and we're going to end with this slide. And um, just, just note, this gives the, the ups and downs of southwide real stumpage prices since basically 1952 with some holes in the data. And um, we, we use this chart just to look at uh, our products and kind of the ups and downs that they've gone through over the past. And uh, for example, we will look at large saw timber. You will see that, you know, the data was kind of sketchy here, but then we had the oil crisis um, in, in the early 1970s and that kind of caused a reset in the market where prices followed and then it went up. And then we had the spotted owl deal on the west coast where supply was strained, demand was high, the price went up. And then we're all familiar with the housing bubble that occurred in 2008 that dropped their prices and they just haven't seen to recover since. But before every reset, before every bump, we of course are in a valley. We've been in a valley for a long time. Okay. All right, so slide three. This is uh, uh, Southeast Pine pulpwood stumpage prices, uh, history of them. This is nominal. This means that inflation is not included. And again, you can see the uh, oil crisis, uh, kind of the spotted owl, the jumps there. Um, and then, you know, we've been down since the housing bubble. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. This is slide two, so we're going to move on to the next slide. Here we go. So, again, this, this is uh, real prices, so inflation is not included. All right, so here we go. Here is, uh, this is pine pulpwood. Bear with me. So here we go. Pine pulpwood has basically been flat since 99, and then we get to... Uh, 2010 and, and we see the drop right here for Alabama in particular following uh, uh, the housing bubble and then we get to COVID and we see a little bump in pulpwood prices okay so next slide this is uh, let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself here guys all right here we go there we go. All right. So going back to the previous slide, this is with, is nominal, without inflation. So post-COVID, COVID, we did have a bump in pulp wood prices. And then when you factor in inflation, that bump didn't look so hot. Okay. All right. This is southeast pine salt timber stumpage prices. This is nominal. That means uh, no, no inflation. So this is uh, southeast, and so that, that includes all the states in southeast, not just Alabama. You will see, again, 
a bump after COVID. The bump looks exceptionally good for Florida, fair for Georgia, but Alabama did see a bump. I mean, a lot of you, I'm sure, experienced some bump in salt timber price during the pandemic. Uh, most of the markets we operate in, we did see a little bit of a bump. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, and let's factor in let's let's factor in inflation. When we factor in inflation. Florida still has a pretty solid bump. Georgia has a small bump, but Alabama looks like when you factor in inflation, there was no real effect to our prices. You get a little better dollar amount, but when you factor in inflation, it just wasn't worth as much to you. Um, the pandemic, let me make sure I'm right, sparked one of the best price increases that we've seen since before the housing bubble, since 2005. And uh, you know, since then, it stayed pretty flat, particularly when you factor in inflation. Okay. Okay, this is uh, age 15 plantations and pine pulpwood. So basically what this slide tells us is how much pulpwood is out there available for sale. So in, in the forestry business, we generally consider pulpwood to become merchantably available when it's at age 15. And this, guys, is a simple supply curve. So when you see the available pulpwood go up, the price naturally comes down. So with the exception of Florida, we, we have seen basically a, a flat price line across most of, most of Georgia and Alabama. Uh, and uh, another thing you're going to notice, and let's see if my mic's still good. What, what do you know about uh, age 15 stands around the year 2000, 2002? What, what happened, what did the government give in, in the late 80s, early 90s? The CRP program. And, and a lot of that volume became available about that time too. So when all that CRP volume became available, all of a sudden while this supply is out there, demand may not be changing all that much and that pushes the price down. Okay. I'm carrying my notes with me so I don't forget anything. All right, this is uh, slide number nine. Okay. This is U.S. age, 15 plantations, pine pulp wood. So we have looked at, uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Southeast, age 28 plantations and pine salt timber price. All right, so in this slide, basically, again, right ahead of the supply increase in, uh, after the bubble pop, you saw demand drop sharply and that was reflected in the price for pine salt timber. I kind of see two stories in this slide. One, again, right at the point of the housing bubble, we had kind of a double whammy. So all this CRP plantation is coming available, getting mature, ready for final harvest. And um, the, the, bu the, the bubble burst at the same time. So we have all this available plantation coming available and when the prices dropped, many landowners chose not to sell a lot of their scheduled timber sales. So we had the added volume from CRP, and then we get the added additional volume from folks delaying their harvest. So that caused an, an incredible increase in available volume. And I think that may be one reason why we haven't seen a significant change in salt timber prices since 2009. Um, I mean, in, in our operation, you know, we saw, you know, great prices, 05, 06, the housing bubble occurred, prices dropped, and then if you remember all the marketing presentations back then, they were saying two more years, two more years, two more years. Well, 2010 rocked along, 2014 rocked along, 2016, no significant increase, right? So, uh, but one thing, another thing that uh, the other story that I'm seeing this is we have gotten really, 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 really good at growing timber. I mean, between silviculture and, and deploying great genetics, we grow timber faster now than we ever have. So 
we are increasing that available volume. Guys, there's a good, there is a good point. There is some good news about this. So this abundant supply is attracting sawmills to our region. It is encouraging investment in current mills. It is um, you know, encouraging mills to increase their capacity. So when things get rolling, we will have the resource here for them. Okay. All right. We need to talk about COVID just briefly. Um, so one thing COVID saw in the onset was folks was like, "Hey, we got to get our own place. We got to get our own house." So it did cause a you know a, a, an uptick in, in single family housing. Um, in the last few months, I, I'll just tell you in our region we're seeing more multifamily housing. We, we're seeing a bump in in that in that sector now. Um, so, you know, there was concern. Y'all remember what the lumber prices did, right? In, in late 2021, lumber prices went through the roof. So there was some concern that uh, you know, folks may uh, consider, you know, other building products other than lumber. But fortunately, you know, lumber prices have come back down to earth a little bit. And then, uh, you know, remote working. So, you know, most of well, this is a dated slide. I'm going to be honest with you. This, this presentation has been put together for a while. Most of the world is starting to come back to work. So I, I have a few friends in the financial sector, and they worked from home right up until the very end of 2022. So, so the world is starting to come back to the corporate office. So I don't know if that's so relevant now as it was. All right, guys. So if we're going to have a timber marketing talk, we have to talk about housing starts. You know, every, every timber market uh, slideshow that you see, we have to talk about um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the housing starts. So um, it is our biggest outlet for lumber. And uh, you will notice in this graph that we had the housing bubble and we kind of hit bottom in 2009 on housing starts and then we had a very slow but steady increase through about 2021. And then in 2022, we saw a little bit of a decrease. And, you know, I don't have any 2023 data yet, but I suspect 2023 is at least going to start off a little bit lower. What caused that? Do you know? What went up? Interest rates went up. You know, some, some of you in this room were here during the Jimmy Carter era. You need to let this generation know that 7% ain't that bad. Right? Yeah. So let's, let's let them know that 7% is a great interest rate. Go ahead and buy that house so we can sell our lumber. Right? Okay. Okay, lumber use adjusted to housing starts. So one thing I want to show you, the, the previous slide, that's housing starts. The next slide, lumber use. Now, I'm visual. I want you to put your visual glasses on, okay? What do you notice about that curve and that curve? They're essentially the same. Long story made short, as goes the housing market, so goes the lumber market. There is a very tight correlation between the two. You, if, if we want improved markets, we really need the housing market to, to pick up. Okay. Okay. Chinese exports, I just wanted to, to touch on this briefly because it, it's not just the Chinese, but it's the Southeast Asian market that, that is kind of important to us. Um, you, you, I, I'll let you read those things there, but I'm going to talk a little bit. You know, China was, was great in particular for Alabama hardwood markets uh, back in uh, 2014 to 2018, but trade was, dis you know, the trade wars disrupted that. China is a very volatile market. Can you imagine that? Very volatile. So, so we're either great trade partners or, or we're, we're barking across the table at each other. Um, but I will tell you this, there are other Southeast Asian countries that are trying to tap in to our market here, to our, to our specifically the Southeast. And the reason is we have the resource. This is a positive note for our market. We need outlets. We need something to compete with housing markets. This is one of those. Um, we have the resource and we are good business partners. I mean, if, if you're in Japan and you're getting your wood from China, 
that, rate, that, that trade is very easily disrupted because of the volatility of China. Us, man, we're happy to sell you timber, right? So we, that, that is a, a potential uptick for us. Okay, this a chart with southern uh, exports to China, and you will see there, you know, between 2014 and 2018, a couple dips there, but uh, 17 and 18 particularly good years for China. And then uh, 2018, 2019, Trump and China kind of had some disagreements, so we had a disruption. 2021, uh, you know, had, had a good year with them. And you will see Mobile is represented in there. And, uh, you know, basically Mobile was doing, you know, 50 to $60 million worth of exports every year to China at that point. Last year, it's, it's, in, it's immeasurable. So China, you know, the Southeast Asia in particular is a good potential outlet for four hours. Okay. All right, Southern Pine Lumber Composite Price. Okay. So we consider this kind of the golden years, uh, 95 to 2000, I'm going to say 2006, when stumpage prices were something that we were happy to sell timber at. Okay, and then um, you will see uh, over here, again, this is uh, basically lumber prices. So it's kind of dipping here. There was some, some increase here. And then y'all know that back in, uh, I think it was early 2021, it got up to almost $1,500 a thousand. Okay, so <clears throat> when let me go ahead and go to the next slide and, and talk about this. This is uh, composite lumber price to large saw timber stumpage price. It's the ratio between the two. And this is a telling slide. Okay. Uh, this point right here where uh, lumber prices kind of spiked, I had a lot of uh, landowners that were calling me and said, TR, I see lumber's up above a thousand. Let's sell my saw timber. Let's do it. And then I had to have the talk with them that, look, there's not a lot of correlation between stumpage and finished lumber. In some markets, we saw a good bump. But in a lot of markets, particularly where there wasn't much competition for the mills, they could still get all the wood they needed for that deflated stumpage price. There was not a lot of movement. Um, this is a very telling slide for me. And don't go home and cuss out your lumber, your mills, your, your mill operators, because you still need to sell their lumber, your lumber to them. But look at this. In the year 2000, this is an example. If the lumber, finished lumber price was $400 a thousand, the ratio was five, that means stumpage price was about $57 a ton. And in the year 2000, that was not too uncommon. Okay. Now the average price in 2021 was about $800 a thousand. At that point, the ratio was 27. That means stumpage price was $29. Okay. So that means those mills are making money hand over fist. Now that was a volatile market. They weren't sure that that was going to sustain, and I think that was a lot of their reasoning. But uh, I'm just telling you, there's room for improvement. There's definitely room for improvement. Okay, next slide. How are we doing on time, guys? About five minutes. I'm going to try to get, try to start rolling now. So the number of meals in the southeast, guys, the number of meals matters. So what drives pricing more than anything else, in my experience, is local competition. It doesn't matter, it does matter, but it doesn't matter so much on what's going on on a global scale or the national scale. If you want good prices for your timber, you need multiple mills competing for that wood. If you want to thin your wood, you at least need a local sawmill. Okay. And, um, you know, in some, some portions of Alabama, guys, and I, I may be speaking to the choir, but you know that, you know, our pulp facilities are very limiting. There's some places where you will struggle to give away pulp wood. But, you know, in, in the last couple of years, I've seen other portions of Alabama and Georgia where there are multiple meals and, where, you know, I've seen some very attractive prices. But the number of meals matter. What this meal, what this uh, 
presentation may not say is, is a lot of the sawmills I feel like that have been lost are kind of the mom and pop sawmills, but a lot of your big boys, they are increasing capacity and they are you know, making inroads to, to being more efficient and being able to take in more wood. Okay. Quick, quick note on logging business. Uh, long story short, you can't get your lumber to the mill without a logger. And uh, since they've become highly mechanized, they need more folks on the crew. And this slide says that you know the number of loggers are down because you guys with one or two men, a couple machines, those are going away. Most of them are highly mechanized now and they have to have more workers. And like a lot of us, they've experienced shortages in labor. And they're an aging workforce. So we need, we need more loggers. Okay? We need to talk about the, the left coast, excuse me, the west coast for just a minute. And, uh, you know, I'm going to let you read the slide, but long story short, regulation and other things that are constraining their ability, not just their supply, but their ability to cut timber, is driving a lot of companies to look towards the southeast. More companies here means more business, more places for our, for our timber. Okay. All right, guys, we're back to our original slide. So all this to say is, is, is everything that we're experiencing right now, are we on the preface of another bump? Because we have been, at, in my opinion, in a reset point for so long. All right, so I've just force-fed you. I've just uh, made you drink from a water hose from so much information. But guys, I'm going to put myself out there and just tell you what I think and what I feel. I may be wrong. When we walk out of here next, you know, today, if you don't think I'm right, tell me. I don't care. It's okay. And, but in five years from now, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But you know, my feeling is the outlook on pulpwood for Alabama is, is a tough one. It really is. When, when West Rock closed in Panama City, when Cortland closed, you know, that had a direct effect on those markets, but it's had a ripple effect all across the state. Uh, pulpwood for the last year has been so hard to move. It's been so hard to even get buyers interested in it. But pulpwood is a tool in the way most of us manage. We need to be able to thin to get our timber to chip and saw size, to saw timber size. So if you have plantations that need thinning, keep working that. Try to get that timber thinned as best you can so that you can get to that end product, chip and saw and saw timber, poles. We can't get there without thinning. If you have cut your timber, consider a different spacing when you replant. So, you know, go, go to a spacing where it's, you know, a lot less, maybe use a containerized seedling where you have a high potential to, of survival and a spacing that will produce a chip and salt tree. My, my it, you know, large dimension lumber and chip and saw, there hasn't been much price distinction between the two. So if we can just get the chip and saw, we will have a, we'll be at a good place with a plantation. Saw timber. You know, one thing the Southeast does, in my opinion, better than any place in the world, is grow good lumber, good pine salt timber lumber. And while prices may not be much to jump up and down about, guys, we have the resource. Um, we mills know that, and you know I can't tell much about the remainder of 23, but I have confidence that in the Southeast and in Alabama. And in the future, we are going to have a market for salt timber. And, and I believe, I'm just believing that it's going to go up. I've got just a few seconds left, guys. Um, I have put our company newsletter on each table. And a lot of people talk about Marshall Thomas's uh, market synopsis every, every day. Go ahead and take a copy of that. If not, uh, we are going completely digital with the newsletter. And there's a QR code at the bottom of the page that you can take and you can enroll for our newsletter and, and get it uh, when it comes out quarterly. All right, guys, I think I'm finishing right on time. You are finishing. Thank you.